All right, everybody, let me start off this video by saying we heard you. In all the cooler reviews that we've been doing lately, we had one major thing missing, and that was this. This is the Be Quiet Silent Loop 3, and according to a lot of comments that we've had, this is supposed to be one of the best all-in-one liquid coolers on the market today. And in a lot of ways, the Silent Loop 3 seems to have what it takes to get the job done, that's for sure. There's a custom three chamber pump with a six pole motor that's engineered from the ground up for silence above all else, despite running at 3,500 RPM. I mean, let's take a listen to this thing when it's running at full speed. So yeah, that's definitely one of the benefits that you're gonna see with the Silent Loop 3. It's the fact that it's pumped, even when running at like full tilt, is very, very quiet. And yes, it will be drowned out by all of the fans in your case and the cooler itself. But more importantly, the noise profile on this thing is very, very, I guess you would call it like neutral, right? There's none of that high-pitched whining that you typically find from Asetek pumps. And there's none of the chugging that you sometimes hear from the Coolit products on the market. So for me, this thing is almost perfect in that respect. Meanwhile, the contact plate is a combination of copper with nickel plating, and it's very, very flat, which points towards Be Quiet actually moving away from Intel-focused optimizations here. If anything, this is a more neutral approach that favors AMD CPU temperatures while negatively impacting Intel. Anyways, pushing that aside, I totally dig what Be Quiet has done with the Silent Loop 3's aesthetics. The pump head is a subtle corrugated surface with a diffuse glow that's controlled through your motherboard's ARGB header, so no custom software here, guys. And yes, that is the only outwards-facing lighting element. Even when it's off, it still looks great. The rest of the cooler, well, it's pure Be Quiet DNA. Black, stealth, and understated alongside excellent build quality. I just wish that Be Quiet would offer it in white like some of their other products. And that move is sort of like a little bit weird too because the Silent Wings 4 fans that are used on this thing are available in white. So Be Quiet, I know you're watching. Launch this thing in white, please. At least then it'll go with some of your cases. And something else that's odd, I don't know if it's just me, but the upside down logos on the fans just bug me. And speaking of these fans, look, we tested the Pro version back when they were first released, and they were some of the best fans on the market at the time, competing with the T30s in many respects. Now, what Be Quiet is using here is actually a detuned version, so the non-pro version. It still runs to 2500 RPM, and they're supposed to get some amazing static pressure numbers. And if you listen to these, well, they are very, very good fans right across their RPM range. And that's what we're going to do right now. Let's have a listen. So yeah, while they do technically get loud, and that's completely understandable since they have to push a ton of air through a very dense fin array, these have a very, very good noise profile. And it's not like Be Quiet is holding these things back either. At 2500 RPM, they're some of the fastest we've seen so far. On the other hand, when running at full speed, they're actually louder than the GA2 and Atmos Stealths, both of which top out at about the same RPM level. Unfortunately, that'll put it slightly behind those two coolers in decibel normalized testing. But overall, this is still one of the quietest coolers we've tested relative to its maximum fan speed. Be Quiet has also started to a standard thickness radiator and fans, and that means the silent loop won't slam into your motherboard's heat sinks in more compact cases, unlike some of the other coolers we've tested in the past. And the silent loop 3 actually has another pretty big trick up its sleeve, and that is the option to refill it if you need to. Basically, what you have here on the side is a small refill port that you just need a Phillips head screwdriver to open, and then Be Quiet gives you 
a bottle full of fluid that you just take off the cap, screw this in, and you can top up the AIO. And I know this might sound like something that should never be needed on a closed loop cooler, but look, gradual evaporation can happen on even the best coolers around. And this allows users to counteract the increased noise and loss of performance when that happens. But you know what won't have a loss of performance? That is this headset from Fractal. It starts with nothing, just a pulse waiting to become something more. A sound that bends space, a curve that cuts through silence, a moment that pulls you in. This isn't just what you hear, it's what you feel. The tension before the drop, the calm before the wind. Because every feeling, every world, every heartbeat has an origin. The Fractal Scape, check it out below. And another thing I absolutely need to mention here, and I have to give Be Quiet a crazy amount of credit for this, is they finally took a step back and looked at their mounting system. Because in the past, their mounting system was always full of little itty bitty pieces that you had to wrangle and hope you didn't drop when you were building your system. Now, there's a lot more straightforward approach, at least on AMD but there is one major area of concern that I've got here, guys. And that's for whatever reason, Be Quiet decided to make the pump's retention arms one of the parts that has the most stress on any cooler out of plastic. This cooler feels like it's built like a tank in every other way. Why give the Silent Loop 3 such an obvious weak point? Anyways, for AMD CPUs, you just remove the stock retention bracket, install Be Quiet's, and then fasten down the block. I should also mention that there's compatibility for Threadripper CPUs with a dedicated mounting kit. The Intel side, well, it involves a little bit more effort. For some reason, Be Quiet decided against using a backplate with movable standoffs for multi socket support and instead expects you to sort of like build it out yourself based on the platform that you're using. And that means you've got to use the included studs and rubber o-rings, slide both into place under the motherboard and then install the standoffs and retention arms and finally screwing down the pump. Yeah, there's a lot more to do here than with the AMD installation process. Now with all that being said, Be Quiet is billing this as their flagship AIO that stands well above the light loop and pure loop in their overall lineup. And because of that, well, it's pretty expensive. Now remember, up until this point, we've tested a solid like 15, 360 millimeter AIOs. And if I look at the average price, across all of those, and I'm talking about the average selling price, not sale price, we're talking about an average of about $125 US. Meanwhile, the 360 millimeter version that we're looking at here goes for about $170 regularly south of the border, or 200 bucks here in Canada. And that firmly puts it in the upper mid-tier pricing range among all the others that we've looked at so far. But sales, well, they've lately brought that price down to a lot more affordable, 130 to 140 40 bucks. And even here, we're seeing it dip down to 160 bucks Canadian. And look, under no circumstance is that cheap. But for what Be Quiet is offering here, so the build quality alongside the option to refill the loop with the included fluid, well, it's not too bad. The only thing that Be Quiet needs though is the performance chops to back up that pricing. So let's see if they are able to do that starting with a 9800X3D. Under a full core workload, the Silent Loop 3 is actually one of the best AIOs we've tested on this specific CPU. At lower decibel levels, it's within only two degrees of the Lianli and the insanely expensive Tri-X and is also narrowly beaten by the Nautilus RS, Atmos Stealth and Ryujin 3 Extreme. And yet it actually becomes even better against all of those at 37 decibels and above. But honestly, I was hoping for the exact opposite opposite to happen here. Be Quiet prides themselves at optimal performance at near silent noise levels. So while these numbers are really good, it would have been really nice to see its best performance a lot lower in the decibel range. And that's really put into perspective when we drill down into the 32 decibel normalized results. The Silent Loop 3 runs neck and neck with the best coolers we've tested, but it also acts sort of like a bridge between those and mid-tier AIOs. And that's a bit of a concern, mostly because of its price. Sure, it's a heck of a lot cheaper than the expensive LCD models, but still more expensive than the Lianli, Corsair, and Cooler Master for that matter. Unless, of course, you find it on sale. Moving to 40 decibels and Be Quiet is able to close the gap a bit more and improve its position overall. But I also think we need to put this into like a different perspective. Every one of these coolers, even the bottom of the heap, Liquid Freezer 3, 
gets the CPU well below 80 degrees, and the vast majority of them are clustered within just five degrees of one another. So at least for this CPU, your choice of 360 millimeter AIO, well, it doesn't really matter. And that lack of separation is even more obvious in gaming, where the Silent Loop 3 does exactly what I was hoping it would do under full core workloads. It's basically tied for the second best at the lowest noise level, but then it falls behind ever so slightly as those fan speeds pick up. Still though, every one of these coolers is completely overkill for a 9800X3D when it's being used for gaming. Even at whisper quiet noise levels, we're getting like 53 degrees or even less. There's just no point in running your cooler any faster. And to be honest with you, that's the real benefit of having some of these massive AIOs. You don't need to run them loud to get amazing temperatures. So that was the easy part. 9800X3D on a 360 millimeter AIO. It, these things are completely overkill for that chip. Nonetheless, the Silent Loop 3, I feel passed with flying colors where so many other coolers, they just fall flat on their butts. On the other hand, what is a challenge for any of these is the 9950X when it's pushed to 250 watts or more via PBO. And look, at full load, this CPU produces a biblical amount of heat, but the positioning here almost perfectly mirrors our 9800X3D results. But since we've tested less coolers on this chip, the Silent Loop 3 now easily places in the top five by essentially matching the Cooler Master and Corsair. It's still a solid two to three degrees behind the Lian Li and Tri-X though. And what that points towards is Be Quiet maybe needing a few more contact plate revisions to get the absolute most out of the AM5 performance when compared to their relatively high price. Triax and Lianli have found that secret sauce somehow. I know I keep on saying this, but they're doing it even without offset mounts. Things don't really change all that much at higher decibel levels, which is pretty much par for the course on any Ryzen 9000 series CPUs. It's actually their integrated heatsink or IHS, which traps a lot of the heat and causes a sort of like plateauing of temperatures. So that's the AMD side of things. And I gotta give Be Quiet a sort of like round of applause. They're really nailing cooling on AM5 and specifically Ryzen 9000 series processors with this cooler. But I also mentioned something else at the beginning of this video, and that is because of the way that they sort of designed that contact plate, Intel might be a little bit sacrificed. And that is exactly what we saw in the testing results on a 285K, to the point where the Silent Loop 3 went from one of the best on AM5 to the absolute worse on LGA 1851, especially at lower decibel levels. Even at higher RPM, it struggles to match the Thermalright Frozen Edge, a cooler you can buy literally three of for the price of a single Be Quiet AIO. And as a matter of fact, other than the Ryujin 3 and Panorama, this is still the most expensive cooler here based on average regular selling prices across the US and Canada. And I think price is something that might be a huge struggle for a lot of Intel users when they're looking at these numbers. While six degrees away from the Panorama might look sort of like, okay, that's actually a massive, like Grand Canyon size gap for an AIO of this caliber. Luckily, ramping up the fan speeds does yield an improved standing, yet we still have to remember the Silent Loop 3 is beaten by coolers that cost much, much less. I mean, look at the ID coolings and the Montec here. All of those are less than 80 bucks, even when they aren't on sale, but they're actually beating this $160 to $170 cooler. And at first glance, you might think that this gaming chart might make the situation look even worse for Be Quiet, but Take a look at the scale on this chart. There's just about three degrees separating it from the Triax and less than two degrees between all the others here. Basically, the processor isn't producing enough heat to phase any of these AIOs, even with the GPU blasting a ton of hot exhaust air into the case. So while the Silent Loop 3 gets pushed to the back of the group here, it's not by all that much. And look, it might sound like I'm making like a ton of excuses for Be Quiet here, but seriously, just look at the results. 13 of these 14 other coolers are well within a slim margin of error here. So what we wanted to do is see if these non-pro fans are holding things back. And to do that, we slapped a trio of Fantex T30s onto this thing and saw 
some very interesting results. So first of all, they don't actually have that much of an effect on the 9800X3D with just a 0.6 degree drop. I mean, at least it's something, but if you were expecting night and day differences here, well, this isn't where it's gonna happen. But on the hotter running 9950X, well, there's a huge temperature drop of about three and a half degrees, which causes the Silent Loop 3 to be tied with the Panorama as the absolute best AIO for this processor. And that actually got me wondering, other than Fantex and their now discontinued T30 AIO lineup, hardly any manufacturer uses their absolute best fans on their flagship AIOs. They either detune them or pull a be quiet and use a bit lower end model. On the other hand, even with the fans the way they are and that little bit of a weakness at very, very low decibel levels, this to me is still like in all of the 15 coolers that we've tested now, probably in the top five when it comes to the combination, what you're getting as a package here, right? You get great cooling, you get very, very good build quality, and you also get the feature of this refill option that so many people seem to absolutely love, and here it's done in a very user-friendly way. I mean, yes, there are cheaper coolers that perform a bit better, but there's also other important factors that performance charts just don't show, but I'd be biased if I completely ignored their spotty record for liquid coolers. Like their first generation of silent loops, it was supposed to be sort of like the flag planting of be quiet into the closed loop liquid cooler space, and everything, that could have gone wrong, went wrong. And unfortunately, it soured a lot of people's opinion about be quiet in this market. On the other hand, the Silent Loop 2 was launched and it seemed to fix almost every single one of those issues. Unfortunately, after a year or two of use, there were a lot of reports about pump failure. But the Silent Loop 3, look, this thing has been out for almost a year now and it seems to be doing pretty well, all things considered, but there is still one major area of potential failure. It turns out those plastic brackets used to screw down the pump head that I was talking about before, well, guess what? They're breaking every now and then. Now look, complete transparency here. This didn't happen to us even after mounting our two samples over a dozen times. So I can't really critique Be Quiet too much because we don't have firsthand experience with these failures. All right, everybody, Future Mike here. And something that you might not know is that we reached out to every single manufacturer when we encounter an issue or we see an issue with their products. And that's exactly what we did with Be Quiet here. We gave them a right to respond and respond they did. <laughs> So basically what they're saying in an email that you're seeing here next to me is that yes, they were encountering some of these issues and they proactively changed the way that the mount is reinforced. And that was done in August of 2025 and any products that were produced after that. But what they're also saying here is, and I'm gonna challenge them, they're saying part of this was due to user error. Part of these breaking brackets was due to user error. And I don't feel like that's the case because if you look at their instruction manual, there are no, absolutely no clear instructions. Is there? <laughs> Wait. No, there are no clear instructions. Well, you'll see that there's absolutely no clear instructions about mounting the CPU block other than to say, just tighten it down. It doesn't say that you should be alternating little by little on each one of these brackets to slowly, slowly tighten them down. Like I said, alternatingly. But anyways, according to Be Quiet, it's been fixed and we're gonna just take their word for it here. So I guess that's pretty much it with the Silent Loop 3 and I do have to give be quiet, I guess like a little bit of a golf clap here. There is some room for improvement, but what they have achieved is exactly what we needed them to when it came to optimizing for the most popular processors right now. And because of that, overall, as a full package, I think that this is one of the best options out there right now when it comes to cooling, AM5 CPUs. Now, the only little hiccup here is of course the price. At $170, it is quite expensive, but if you can find it for $140, $130, I would not hesitate for a second to recommend what Be Quiet is offering here. So anyways, I'm Mike with Haro Canucks. I will see you in the next one. And honestly, guys, there is a lot of additional cooler content coming up. I, I can't wait for it. Anyways, have a great day, and I'm gonna get on to some additional testing.